Uh, as Roger said, I'm, I'm a technologist. Um, I would uh, describe to you today the way that we look about nanotechnology and ways to, as you could see here, we are quite heavily involved in the study of various nanostructures, uh, both from the material point of view, basic chemistry, as well as some uh, medical applications. I'll take you today for our journey in the, in the last decade in, in the field of nanotechnology and the way in which we understand self-assembly and that, and by that way being able to develop new uh, therapeutic approach as well as new tools and uh, uh, structures. As I discussed with some people in, the, in, in this uh, audience, uh, we are looking for collaborators. So we are poor organic chemists. We are, we are looking for people to take this technology and, and, and make something useful out of them. Um, so actually we have been interested in, in, in the process of self-assembly of, of amyloid fibers, which are very important uh, uh, pathological uh, uh, problem involved in, in serious degree, uh, uh, diseases like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, type 2 diabetes, and many more. These are well-ordered structure. They have a clear X-ray fiber diffraction, uh, very thin nano-sized elements. Uh, but, and, and very interesting point is the fact that in, in different diseases, let's say in the brain of Alzheimer's disease patient and the pancreas of type 2 diabetes patient, you see remarkable uh, 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 similar nanometric scale uh, uh, structures. Uh, in spite of the fact there's no, that there is no simple homology between various amyloid forming uh, proteins and polypeptides. The story is even more complicated. Uh, we were among the first to show that it's sorry, that it's actually not these well-ordered semi-crystalline structures, but probably things that are on pathway, small nanomer and nanometric scale structures that are on pathway or off pathway to, to form these structures that are involved in the pathology of this disease, like Alzheimer's disease and, and, and Parkinson's disease and type 2 diabetes. And we demonstrated already eight years ago the formation of, of transient membrane active prefibular assemblies of the islet amyloid polypeptide. This is a polypeptide that is involved in, in uh, pancreatic degeneration type 2 diabetes. Uh, later on, there was a very interesting uh, uh, work in, uh, uh, from a, a group in Minnesota of Karen Ash which demonstrated the formation of nanoscale dodecameric assemblies that are involved in a, a memory impairment in the case of uh, Alzheimer's disease more than mice. And they uh, isolated these structures in the case of uh, uh, memory impaired uh, uh, mouse models. Uh, moreover, when they re-inject these uh, uh, isolated structures, it could replicate this uh, uh, form of uh, 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 memory impairment. The reason that I spent quite a lot of time, I show you by, that by engineering we are able to uh, fully control uh, uh, the formation of these structures. Uh, so the question for us in, in the last 10 years or so was studying the molecular basis for the recognition and self-assembly of a uh, process of, of, of these amyloid nanofibers, especially at the uh, uh, very early steps. And our approach was a reductionist one, while amyloid fibers are formed in most cases by polypeptide of 30 or 40 amino acids or even longer. Uh, other studies that demonstrate that short peptide fragments can form similar structures. And we systematically analyzed short peptide fragments to pinpoint residue that play a role in molecular recognition and self-assembly processes. Uh, and based on this mechanistic insight, we identify novel fragments as short as tetrapeptide that can form uh, uh, amyloid-like nanofibers and develop new way to control this process. Um, I'm moving very fast, just as a, as a notice, in my last slide I will have a, a, a web address in which all the original papers could be, uh, 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 could be downloaded. Uh, and we use various techniques, uh, uh, we use a lot of peptide array analysis, you can see it's two posters, uh, uh, in the poster area, uh, we use uh, peptidomimetics and uh, spectroscopy, uh, phage display analysis as well as electron microscopy, and 
to make a very long story short, we were the first to show that very short peptide fragment can form typical amyloid fibers uh, uh, in spite of the fact that there is no simple homology between these very short amyloid forming peptide motifs. All of them contain aromatic moieties, especially phenylalanine. Uh, we speculated that the interaction between these moieties may play a role in the formation of well-ordered amyloid fibers, and, and, and we had some reason to believe that this is the case. You can see beautiful aromatic letters in some beta helices proteins, and we were in the dark for a few years, but since 2005, there were several uh, 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 direct demonstrations by uh, X-ray fiber diffraction analysis and others showing uh, the role of these uh, 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 aromatic moieties in the formation of the structure, but I'm moving very fast in the, due to this format of, uh, of lecture in this conference, but it was a very nice demonstration how by uh, theoretical consideration you can get into a notion which was later on proved by uh, structural analysis. And uh, this nowadays uh, there are many uh, direct structural analysis showing these beautiful aromatic letters in, in, in various uh, uh, amyloid forming structures. Uh, so, again, moving very fast, understanding the, the molecular basis for the formation of these nanostructures, uh, a, a great challenge was to try to inhibit this formation by, in, in a way, engineering it at the nanoscale using various uh, uh, methods. One is based on peptidomimetics, as I already mentioned, and the other one is based on small organic molecules. So you could see the structure of this molecule, it's the aromatic structures, the uh, flat aromatic structures interact on the one hand, but on the other hand you have this steric hindrance based on, the, on, on these structures. So again, I'm, I'm moving very fast, but uh, we're taking our notion of aromatic interactions together with a, a beta breakage technology that we developed, uh, got quite a lot of attention, and acting like uh, pharma, small pharma, uh, 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 nanopharma uh, 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 establishment, so we were able to, to, uh, um, to optimize by iterative cycle uh, uh, from structures that can inhibit the formation of, of, of these assemblies by manipulation at the nanoscale, uh, ended up with a lead and, and, and two backup compounds, and if you remember, in one of the first few slides, I, I showed the dodecameric 12 mesh structures that are involved in uh, a memory impairment in case of Alzheimer's disease model mice. By using a novel com a chemical entity, we were able to completely inhibit the formation of these structures. Uh, moreover, again, I'm moving very fast. Uh, uh, how do you test this uh, efficacy also in, in, in animal models? Is by using a, a maze, uh, in this case, uh, Moorish water maze. And you could demonstrate that by application of, of the compound, which is oral bioavailable and, and it's very safe, uh, a chemical uh, entity, uh, we could significantly improve the time that it takes the, the mice to find their way in the maze upon treatment uh, uh, with the compound. Which was quite impressive, but it became much more impressive when we had a, a third group which included normal mice with the same genetic background but lacking the two mutations that uh, 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 lead to the memory impairment in, in, in the case of these mice. Uh, uh, so you could see the mo normal mice in blue, the treated mice in, in red, and the mice treated in, uh, with vehicle in black. So there's no significant difference between the normal and treated mice in either the, the length of the path that it takes them in, in the maze, because if they don't remember uh, making a longer path, or the time that it takes them to reach the platform. But these two groups are significantly different than those treated by the vehicle. So we could not only significantly improve uh, uh, the cognitive performance of these mice, but we could restore it to levels that are uh, uh, non, uh, uh, that are uh, non, uh, not significantly different from those of normal mice. This compound actually has some derivative with improved uh, pharmacological properties, is now under advanced clinical uh, uh, development, hopefully we get into clinical trials soon. Another uh, uh, program which is related to diabetes in a, 
earlier stage and now proving efficacy with an American uh, a pharma company. Another work which is more uh, 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 embryonic, but you could see a poster related to Parkinson's disease, uh, is now in, in, in earlier stage, but uh, we proved in, in uh, we have a proof of concept in, in, in uh, animal models. So altogether, it's I'm moving very fast again, but it's the, show you the concept that by understanding mechanistically how things are done without being a neurobiologist or an endocrinologist, just a poor a, a peptide chemist who understands the mechanism of formation of nanostructures, you can develop a, a, a various compounds that may serve as drugs. Just for a few minutes, I, I, I would like uh, uh, to discuss our nanotechnological uh, uh, related uh, structural work uh, uh, related to the formation of new nanocarriers, nanostructures, nanoobjects. Uh, we have the first demonstration, I told you that a very short peptide, the shortest tetrapeptide, can form typical amyloid nanostructures and basically we, we demonstrated for each and every amyloid forming protein and polypeptide we, we found the, the smallest uh, fragment which could form these structures and then manipulated the, uh, 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 the amino acid in, uh, uh, within to find the, the uh, uh, forming uh, uh, recognition motifs. And we looked for the smallest amyloid forming structural motif studying the beta amyloid polypeptide. So I told you about our uh, affection to aromatic amino acid. I told you about small uh, fragments that can form these structures, so, and, and about inhibitors. So we started with a former a, a short peptide, heptapeptide, that forms amyloids to inhibitors. The common denominator was the diphenylalanine motif. We thought that we will be the first to show that the dipeptide can form amyloid fiber. Quite to our surprise, uh, 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 we discovered that these structures form tubes, tubular structures, all of one. Uh, and moving very fast, we use this as, as a degradable casting mold to make uh, uh, various uh, metallic objects of high aspect ratio. Uh, we use it for nanofluidics application. Later on, we advanced our ability to manipulate it in, in, uh, uh, in the nanoscale, and we can make not only uh, uh, nanotubes, but also nanospheres uh, by uh, manipulating the structures. We can control the growth of these nanotubes and nanospheres. In, in this uh, uh, example, this is using physical vapor def deposition, PVD. We can make, sorry, we can make uh, 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 what we call nanoforest arrays of nanostructures. When you have thousands of, uh, of structures on, on, a, on the size of a pinhead, and fully control the length of the structures. Uh, uh, this is the same magnification, so you can have 40 uh, micron structures and, and 4 micron structures by just controlling the evaporation of the structures. Uh, uh, the structures are also very interesting from the mechanical and physical point of view, but probably one or the most uh, rigid organic self-assembled nanostructures the tubes have young modulus of about 20 gigapascal. The, the, uh, uh, the spheres have young modulus of about 200 to 300 gigapascal. Those of you who are not familiar with material science, just to give you a reference, titanium has about 70 gigapascal. Uh, steel is about 200 gigapascal. So you have something from peptides, similar to plastics, with a rigidity of more than, uh, than good steel. And uh, again, this could be used for many applications. Uh, also, it has unique uh, piezoelectrical properties, has semiconductor properties. This was uh, a paper recently published and, and was uh, uh, reviewed in News and Views in Nature, uh, if you want to read the, the, the lighter version a few months ago. And Finally, we can make not only uh, nanostructures, but also uh, uh, hydrogels, uh, which, as, as the nanotube, is a nanosphere of remarkable mechanical uh, stability. I, I use it as an appetizer, hopefully to get some collaborations here. Uh, so you, I'm using some, uh, uh, providing some technological platform. So in, in some of the things that we did with the hydrogel is, I told you, starting with biology, going to material science, and then back to biology, we use this for a slow release of drugs and for tissue engineering applications, but 
there are many more uh, possible applications. And again, we, we have new structures at the nanoscale. There are some applications that are not relevant, yeah, not relevant to this uh, audience. Some are more relevant sensors, biotechnology, and others. Uh, so just to summarize, uh, uh, amyloid fibers are naturally occurring self-assembled nanostructures. Uh, we showed the role of, of aromatic moieties in these structures. We speculated that the stacking of the aromatic moieties has a role in this. We demonstrated that we can control the, the formation of these structures. Uh, this is a picture that I like very much. My students made so proving that we are chemists. And as promised, I move so fast, so uh, you are very welcome to visit the website and look for uh, the original papers, which I am. Uh, so. <laughs>